uh, and I will start the broadcast. All right. Good luck. Hello, uh, this is John Sack, uh, founding director at Highwire Press. Uh, we're just about ready to start the uh, one-hour uh, uh, impact and usage visor user group. Uh, just a, a quick check. Uh, Eric, can you verify that we're seeing the cover slide? Yes. All right, good. So uh, let me go ahead and begin uh, with just a few comments of introduction. Uh, first of all, we are recording this session. Uh, we will uh, post the recording and the slides from this session on the uh, the Visor Suite uh, subforum in uh, the community forum, uh, so that you can refer others to that uh, after the uh, session's over. It'll probably take us about a day to convert it and and upload it. Uh, I'd also like to uh, introduce uh, the uh, my colleague Eric Hall. Uh, who's now the product manager for uh, the Visor suite of products, Impact and Usage Visor. Uh, Eric uh, has a, a long background in uh, scholarly publishing, is, is from being a, uh, a publisher to being a product manager now at Highwire. Uh, and uh, he's taken over responsibility uh, for product management uh, for Visors from Kevin John Black. Hello, everyone. Uh, and uh, I'd like you to know that uh, anytime you need help with visors, there is a, an email address you can write to visor-support uh, at highwire.org, and that will reach uh, me and Eric and our engineering director, uh, and we'll pick that up and get you an answer. Uh, usually, we'll acknowledge the email uh, within the day, uh, if not provide you with a solution or any, any help. We'll go on now and, and uh, get started. The, uh, the agenda uh, for this session uh, is going to be looking at some recent changes uh, since the last uh, Visor user group meeting in the fall of uh, 2016. We had two user group meetings in the spring, one at Stanford and one in London, but we're going to go roll back to the fall here, uh, give you updates uh, on what we've been uh, working on. Uh, and then we're going to look at uh, what's been introduced in 2017 uh, and what is just about to be introduced uh, in Q uh, uh, in the next few weeks uh, and then in Q3 and Q4. Uh, and then uh, finally, we'll finish uh, with, I hope, uh, uh, 10 or more minutes to look at uh, your priorities uh, for development going forward. This is a good chance for us to talk to, uh, to hear from you uh, uh, about what you're interested in. So with that, I'll uh, turn it over to Eric, uh, and let me do that. John, Eric, you're not. Oh, there you are. While you're uh, handing over uh, presenter uh, responsibilities, um, I wanted to uh, just Ask people to please, uh, in the, um, the GoToWebinar panel, if you would like to um, ask any questions, by all means, uh, please, uh, you can either put them in the chat function or uh, you can put them in the questions function uh, within, that, within that panel. All right, over to you, Eric. Okay, thanks so much. So I'm going to present the, um, the Visor Manager uh, tool for uploading and alerts. So um, for those who uh, don't know, we now have a site called manage.visors.org uh, where uh, we're presenting a really easy way to upload rejected article files or RAC files and article additional metadata files or foam files into your impact visor. And um, to request an account uh, for the person responsible for uploading these files uh, into the Impact Visor, you can simply email me at impactvisorsupport at highwire.org. Uh, your email should include the person's name and email address. Uh, the email address provided will be uh, the username for Impact Visor Manager. And we'll use the email address for automated status messages as well. 
So uh, once you're logged into the Impact Visor Manager, you'll be presented with the Impact Visor dashboard. And the dashboard is broken out into three main sections that you can see there. Uh, the first at the top refers to your published articles. Uh, this area tracks when your published article metadata citations or usage data was last updated. Uh, and you can see there that there's um, uh, some dates next to each of those files to show you when that occurred. The next section of the dashboard tracks your rejected manuscript data. And you can uh, this you can view when uh, your rejected manuscript files last updated and processed. And it gives you the ability for you to upload a new uh, rejected manuscript data file if you choose. And finally, the last section of the dashboard tracks when the citations and journals for your cohort journals have last been updated. Uh, and again, um, you, can, you can update that yourself as well. You can also uh, link directly out to your own visor reports uh, simply by clicking on the left there where you see reports. So uh, when you click upload uh, to upload new uh, rejected manuscript files, uh, you'll see the file specification. And uh, what that does is uh, it helps verify that um, you've got everything in the appropriate format uh, for upload. Once you verify that your data file follows the requirements outlined in the rejected manuscript specification document, you can select one or more files by clicking on the Choose Files button. And uh, here's, that, um, here's that format again. Uh, it's laid out for you in the tool simply by clicking Rejected Manuscripts File Specification. So once you select the intended file, the Impact Visor Manager will automatically scan the data uh, for inconsistencies or formatting errors. Uh, if there are any errors, your file will be systematically rejected and all errors will be listed in the red text that you see here. So the validation scan, it will list how many errors were found uh, and the type of errors that were identified. And then you can go back into the file, make those changes, and re-upload. Um, you'll also find the location for each of those errors. Uh, the line number for each error is listed directly before the error message. Um, and that allows you to go into the file and see exactly where the error occurred. We've also got a list of possible error messages uh, as well. If you wanted to take a look at that, uh, that'll give you an idea um, of what the problem may be with the file you're trying to upload. So in this case, the file's not UTF-8 compliant, uh, so it can't move on to the next stage of validation. So with that, uh, I'm gonna hand it back over to you, John. Uh, just bear with me a second. Thanks, Eric. Uh, let me uh, just add a comment that uh, the the goal for the, the Visor Manager tool uh, is to provide you with full uh, options for self-service uh, for visors. So you can upload files uh, there without going through uh, Highwire uh, anytime you wish. Uh, but of course, if you need help on anything, we're here. Uh, just write to visor-support and we'll take care of it. Uh, we're also, you know, if there are questions like uh, uh, how should I approach a particular problem uh, in visors, then of course uh, just uh, write me and Eric. We'll be glad to help. And uh, just to reiterate, uh, if you want access to the visor manager, uh, just write uh, visor-support at highwire.org and uh, Eric will uh, uh, create a login for you. Uh, the login, just uh, another thing we found uh, can confuse people, the login for the Visor uh, Manager tool is a personal login. In other words, you can't use the login you use for the Visor Visualization Suite. Uh, it's personal because we're, we're sending confirmation messages to your email address. That's why everybody should have their own uh, access. Okay, now let's uh, take a look at uh, uh, the upgrade we've done from uh, Tableau 9 to Tableau 10. Uh, 
at the top uh, uh, third of the screen is the old uh, Tableau uh, interface. At the bottom uh, two-thirds of the screen is the new Tableau interface. Uh, you'll see uh, just a, a few changes. I think you'll figure them out pretty quickly. Uh, there used to be a, a, a place that you could create saved views. It was called Remember My Changes. Now in Tableau uh, 10, it's called Original View. Uh, and uh, this leads to some non-transparencies in uh, some views. Uh, I'll go over that in just a minute. Uh, in addition, uh, there are a few of the uh, controls that were in the top center of the screen are now over on the left. A uh, very important one is the refresh uh, uh, control, and uh, that is now explicit. Uh, it used to be this thing at the uh, in the top that looked like a an on off switch uh, and it's now explicitly labeled refresh uh, there's uh, also a, a new uh, download uh, rather than an icon uh, there's actually an explicit download uh, function what I would like you to do understand here is if you want to download an image that is you want to download the picture of what you're looking at uh, that's the time to use the download function. Uh, but if what you want to do is download data, that's n this is not the place to go. Uh, in fact, downloading uh, data uh, is a, a completely separate operation. Uh, and uh, if, if you click on download and then uh, the, the data option there, you will probably not get what you'd really like. So downloading an image or a PDF happens with the download function. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, uh, but I would really recommend uh, that you click through to the uh, uh, to the pop-up uh, and use the scaling function so that you don't get uh, a, a very large, a, a long, narrow image, uh, but instead you get uh, uh, essentially a paper-sized, a page-sized uh, download. All this is explained uh, in a downloading document. Uh, downloading and exporting document that is in the community forum. If you want to download data though, uh, that's, that's when you do not use the download uh, button at the top, le uh, top right. Instead, you're going to click on a, uh, uh, one of the uh, column titles. And when you click on that column title, uh, you'll get a pop-up that has a small uh, icon that's supposed to represent a spreadsheet. You click on that icon, and uh, or it will look uh, as it does in this uh, slide. And uh, from there, uh, you'll get uh, a, a window that looks sort of like what you want, but it isn't yet a download. You then click on Download All Rows, uh, and uh, you will get uh, a spreadsheet. Again, all this is explained in the community forum, uh, in the sub-forum called Visor Suite. It's right toward the top. So we'd like uh, to make sure you, you uh, do that when you're trying to download data. If you have questions, again, just ask. Uh, one of the other changes is, uh, that's uh, pretty significant and, and pretty helpful uh, is we've gone from an implicit uh, uh, Dialog a selection of multiple options to an explicit one. Now, before, you might remember that if you wanted to select multiple options in a dialog box, you'd have to quickly select uh, multiple ones or the system would pause and refresh the screen after each one. We all found this really irritating, especially those of us who use the product a lot. Uh, so we've switched to an explicit uh, confirmation that you've made all your selections. So now uh, you open the dialog box, you can take your time selecting multiple options, but you must click the apply button when you're done. Uh, it, it's possible to forget to click the apply button. If you forget, uh, you'll see that uh, the, the label uh, has not changed at the top. If so, just reopen it and then click apply. Um, another thing that can be pretty helpful, uh, even with the, uh, the option, the, the multiple select options, if, if you want to select uh, m options across multiple pop-ups, uh, it can be really handy. Uh, it, what you'll notice now is that the system does refresh after each pop-up. 
if that's irritating to you, uh, you can actually cause it to, uh, to not do that. Uh, rather than have it refresh after each, after you close each pop-up, uh, you can click the pause icon uh, and that will have the system wait until you explicitly tell it uh, to resume. And then it will apply all your changes at once. Uh, this can be kind of handy. Um, I mentioned earlier about uh, saved views. Uh, sometimes we hear from uh, publishers who are doing a lot of work, especially uh, if they're uh, doing uh, multiple pop-ups and, and sliders set up to represent a particular report that they want to create for, say, an, an editor. Uh, you end up, you know, clicking around, setting four or five things, uh, and then you uh, have to do that over and over again. What uh, you can do now is save a view. And I'll just take you through the steps on that. Uh, let's say you select uh, a bunch of uh, uh, pop-ups. Uh, you select a measure by. Uh, you select a talk section. Uh, you select a custom. Uh, and then what you can do uh, is click on the original view label. It will then give you the option to name the view that you're going to save. And what you want to do uh, here, I, I would always recommend that you prefix the view name with your initials so that uh, if somebody comes along later and wonders what is this view for, or uh, they can, they'll know who to ask. Uh, plus, it keeps you from overwriting a colleague's uh, uh, selections on views, assuming that you don't have the same initials as your colleagues. So uh, then when you want to reuse that saved view, you, you go back into, say, the hot article tracker. Uh, it will open up to the original view. You then click on original view, and you'll see that your list of saved views is in the middle of the pop-up. You just select that, and you're done. It, it restores all those saved views. Now I want to talk briefly about performance improvements. Um, We've, we've noticed that, uh, especially for uh, publishers with a large number of articles, a large number of citations, a large number of journals, the performance of the system wasn't uh, as crisp as it needs to be for a decision support tool. Uh, so we implemented a new approach uh, to, uh, to that, uh, which has some, some really good benefits, uh, but uh, one or two pitfalls that I want to point out. Uh, performance is improved anywhere from 30 to 90 percent. Uh, your typical mileage may vary, but uh, generally somewhere in the uh, 50 percent uh, speed up. The way we've done this is by reducing the date range of articles that's included by default. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. There's now a pop up uh, in, in, I think, every viewer. Uh, that is usually to the left of uh, uh, any date slider. And the pop-up defaults to either the last two years or the last three years, uh, depending on the, the situation. Uh, so when you open a viewer now, uh, it's going to go to the default number of uh, years. If you want to look, if you're looking for, say, only uh, you want to look at 2017 articles or 2016 and 2017 articles, just leave it alone. It's it's fast and it's already set for you. Uh, but if you're interested in doing a, a more longitudinal comparison, uh, then uh, you'll probably want to change that to the maximum, uh, which is six years. And the years include five years plus the current year in progress. So we're, we now start with 2012. You can still use the date slider. This, this also helps. Uh, you, you don't have to spend as much time fussing with the date slider uh, as you used to. If you really want to just use year boundaries, uh, you'll find that the pop-up here is, is really pretty handy. Uh, you can see that it, it usually has this year, which is the year in progress, or lets you do two, three, four, five, or six years. Uh, and that's just so much easier than setting things in the explicit uh, uh, slider. But you can do fine-tuning with the slider. Uh, what we've found is one of the consequences of this is some of you have saved views that uh, were relying on six years of data. 
if you uh, if you had that, you need to go in and essentially refresh that uh, that view because the pop up, the year of publication pop up, is fighting with your uh, with your saved view. If if uh, if you get a if you log in and uh, where you're used to seeing data, you see a blank screen. That's probably what's happened. Uh, if if you uh, would like, you can click uh, at the top left. There's a refresh button. Click that, or explicitly set the year of publication uh, pop-up. Uh, if that doesn't do it for you, just uh, again uh, send us an email. Uh, if you can take a screenshot, that would be handy. Uh, I wanted to briefly comment on uh, Social Visor. Uh, it was a product we were investigating last year, uh, and uh, I did about uh, 10 interviews with publishers about what uh, they would use Social Visor for. And by and large, what we heard is people had no good use cases. Uh, they were interested in the information. Everybody thought, oh, this is cool. We'd be able to see you know, which articles get the most uh, tweets and, and uh, so on, much faster than looking you know, an article at a time uh, at the altmetric data. Uh, but really no uh, decision support uh, needs for that data. Uh, so we've, we've uh, put uh, Social Visor on hold uh, and have prioritized uh, Prospect Visor uh, over it. Uh, so uh, let's now go uh, into looking ahead, uh, actually looking at 2017, and I'm going to turn it over to Eric uh, to uh, uh, talk you through uh, what I think is one of the most important uh, new features we've introduced uh, uh, this this year, certainly, uh, because it really allows uh, for the, the visors to deliver information to you without you having to go to visors first. Change the presenter over to Eric. Are you ready to present, Eric? I am. All right. You're on. Thanks, John. So, uh, as John said, um, we are really excited about uh, the new alerts. Hey, function. Eric. Yes, Eric. I'm uh, seeing uh, the presenter view, not the uh, attendee view. Uh, not that that's. We don't have any embarrassing uh, speakers' notes, so I suppose that's <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to slideshow. I don't know. Um, it's it's probably picking up the wrong screen. Uh, I'm not how, sure how to fix that on Windows. I know how to fix it on a Mac. Um, uh, if you want, I can uh, uh, broadcast it uh, and just flip the slides for you. Yeah, if you don't mind, that would be great. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll hand it back to you. All right. All right, let's see. All right. Um, Slide 27. That's great. Thanks, John. So uh, as John mentioned, uh, we're really excited about the alerts functionality now available to um, uh, Visor customers. And uh, in short, what it does is delivers a lot of the same power of the Visors uh, to you rather than you having to go to the Visors. Um, I think a, another advantage is it also expands the um, the application advisors uh, in a really efficient manner. So there are currently four alerts available. Uh, there's one for use advisor, uh, institutional usage, and there are three for impact advisor, the hot article tracker, rejected article tracker, and the advanced correlator of usage and citations. And you can set the alerts up, as you see on the right there, you can set the alerts up to be delivered as a static PDF uh, if you just want to uh, share some visuals with uh, a colleague or an editorial staff member, uh, or you can send a link uh, in the email to the fully functional report, or you can send both. And I'll show you how that works in just a second. So uh, very short, very briefly here, uh, what alerts does is it helps to automate reporting. So you can set up alerts uh, to be sent out at, at regular intervals or, or when you so choose. Uh, it saves staff time having the information come to them rather than them go in themselves. And it expands Visor access to key decision makers. So it, it's not just uh, publishing staff. You're able to extend some of these visuals out to editorial staff, editorial board members, etc. Next slide, please, John. 
All right. So uh, as you saw with the previous part of the presentation, um, this is the uh, Visor Manager tool here. And again, that's manage.visors.org. And by logging in, uh, you can then click on the navigation link on the left to alerts, where you'll be taken to the screen. And here you can see all the alerts that you scheduled, the enabled alerts, or just the, the disabled alerts. If you look to the right of each of these alerts, uh, you can see um, that some are enabled, some are not, because we're in the all alert screen. Uh, you can choose to send that alert uh, immediately, uh, or you can delete it entirely. Let me show you how they're set up. John, if you wouldn't mind. Sure thing. Uh, just a reminder, Eric, uh, a, a verbal reminder. Uh, if uh, you have questions as we're going through this, please feel free to just type them into the chat box, and Eric and I will pick them up. Uh, or you can wait until all the way at the end of the session, uh, but uh, getting questions along the way is, is great because we can answer them uh, for everybody then. Thanks, John. So um, by clicking on uh, New Alert, you'll be taken to this screen where um, you can decide uh, how often you want this email to go out uh, to you. So you can do that as soon as the visor is updated with new data. Um, and we are currently working on uh, the ability to set visors to go out when a particular threshold has been reached. So uh, if you, for example, reach a certain threshold of sites per month, um, that's something that uh, the visors can alert you to. Just below that, you can choose which visor you want to go out for this particular alert. And John, if you'll move to the next slide, you can configure the emails in the next section. And th this for me is really powerful. Uh, you can um, choose the name of this alert so that it's clear to all of those that it is going to, uh, what it is you're trying to convey or the information that, um, uh, how it should be used. And as you can see there, there are essentially two uh, email address boxes. The first one uh, allows um, emails to go out with a static PDF of the report. Again, this is essentially just a snapshot of the report. And then just below that, you can also choose to have people receive the PDF, as well as a link to the active report. So they can go in and, and move filters uh, and change dropdowns um, uh, to, to get to exactly the information they're looking for. And finally, you can customize a message uh, to those people receiving it. Next slide, please. So uh, the next part of setting the alert uh, allows you to set all the filters. So if there's something very specific that uh, you want to convey or a certain slice of information that you want to pass on to a colleague, uh, this is the place to do that. Uh, it works exactly the same way as it does uh, in, the, in the full product. So once you've got all your filters set, you would move on to the next stage. Oh, sorry, there's a couple pop-ups here. Um, and this is a, an example of the alert email. This is how it comes through. Um, again, uh, this can go as a PDF or as a link to uh, the full report. If you move on to the next slide, John, you can see what people will see when they click on the link. Um, as you notice, it looks a, a lot like the full product. You've got um, the manuscript inspector, editor overview, and category overview tabs as well as access to all of the dropdowns and sliders. Next slide, please, John. All right. Um, so just to, to uh, repeat, um, uh, why we think alerts is really important is that it allows you to serve, it, it allows visors to serve people without them having to log in, remember to log in, go through, uh, the, the work to log in. You can send alerts to anyone. They don't need to have a login. Uh, they don't need to have the username and password for visors. They don't need to have uh, the visor manager login. Uh, but in order to set up alerts, someone has to have the visor manager login. Your account managers uh, are going to contact you 
to help you set up your first alerts. Uh, but uh, we'd be uh, really pleased if you went ahead and uh, started that. Uh, again, if you uh, don't have a login to the Visor Manager tool, uh, just contact uh, uh, Eric or uh, email visor-support and we'll set, set that up for you. All right, the, uh, the next uh, con topic of conversation, the two topics really about uh, stuff that is in the uh, in the queue right now uh, we're working on. One is called metadata normalization. The second is prospect viewer. They're not related directly to each other. So uh, metadata normalization is something that uh, all of us uh, have wanted now since we imp implemented Impact Visor. Uh, over there on the left, uh, you see the kinds of things that many of you have uh, in your metadata a lot of singulars and plurals. Uh, uh, it w and, and in many cases, uh, what you'd really like is for the system to treat those singulars and plurals as the same thing. Uh, your talk sections and your collections are places where this happens a lot. Uh, it happens not only with singulars and plurals, uh, but it happens uh, what, with what I call metadata drift. Basically, uh, you know, the, the editor in 2014 uh, called the section uh, special articles and the editor that came along uh, after that editor decided uh, to uh, call it uh, uh, invited articles. And you want to tell the system, treat these as the same thing. They're really uh, the same uh, type of content uh, and we now have a tool for doing that. So uh, we'll be rolling out this tool uh, with the updates to data that comes in August. Uh, and the singulars and plurals we're going to fix automatically for you. Uh, the, the system is uh, smart enough to know uh, the difference between something, something without an S and something with an S uh, and with something with an ES and a Y and so on. Uh, it doesn't do automatic fixes of Latin, uh, so it uh, it isn't going to fix uh, that last example uh, in the uh, bulleted list. Uh, uh, there is uh, one publisher who had clinical trials and then somewhere snuck in clinical trails. Uh, I won't name names. Uh, we've seen uh, some other cases like errata, erratum, coragenda, coragendum. It won't automatically uh, fix those. You can uh, adjust the uh, the automatic uh, merging of, of metadata categories, uh, or you can take manual control and uh, merge things like uh, special article and articles that are special. Uh, you can uh, tell the system to treat two things at, or, or more as the same. We'll uh, publish complete documentation on this uh, in August when the feature is released. Uh, but if uh, any of you are uh, particularly anxious to uh, to have this done for you uh, and would like it to happen uh, before the, the uh, uh, mid-August update to the data, just let us know. We'll be glad to uh, look into whether we can apply it to your data uh, and let you uh, take a look and, and give us any feedback. Again, if there are questions on this, uh, I'd love to uh, hear from you. Uh, uh, the second uh, uh, thing that we uh, have in our uh, roadmap uh, is Prospect Viewer. Now, you know, uh, if you are an impact, a Usage Visor customer, you know that uh, Usage Visor already lets you look at prospects uh, by looking at turnaways. Uh, but these are turnaways. The, the current uh, prospecting that you can do in Usage Visor is for turnaways that are in your subscription database. They may be lapsed subscribers. They may be subscribers who subscribe to five of your journals, but not another five of your journals. Uh, and the system does that really well. What we're going to be doing uh, with uh, our work uh, uh, later this year is expanding the scope of Prospect Viewer so it knows about subscribers you don't know about. That is, it knows about IP addresses and institutions uh, beyond your own publishing customers. And we think this will uh, greatly expand uh, 
uh, the, the ability to look into essentially new prospects, new contacts. Uh, if you're interested in testing that with us, uh, uh, go ahead and uh, send us an email uh, to let us know. Uh, we can uh, talk with you uh, during the development and get your, your feedback on that. I already know at least one person uh, who's pretty seriously interested in this. Uh, next, I wanted to comment uh, on uh, something new uh, that we're introducing, which is consulting services. Um, we, we've heard from uh, a number of you that uh, it takes uh, time and skill to use advisors. Uh, and sometimes when you're pulling a report that you've pulled before, you know, to create something for an editorial board, it's really straightforward. Uh, but when you uh, are uh, doing some kind of analysis or a, sort of a one-off investigation, you might not have, have done that before. Uh, you might have a problem thinking, where, you know, where do I start? How do I do this? Well, if it's a question of where do I start, then please just, just write uh, uh, me and Eric and we'll help you find the best uh, way to get started. But if you really think, you know, I'd like somebody to do this for me, it's kind of complex, I don't have the time to do this and investigate the data, uh, then we actually have a consulting service uh, now uh, based out of our Brighton office, uh, headed by Colin Cavaney, uh, who uh, can assign a, a consultant. Their consultants are not only skilled in visors, uh, they're skilled in Google Analytics. Uh, and sometimes the, the right answer to a question is not in visors, it might be in Google Analytics. Uh, they can set uh, up Google Analytics for you uh, and use it very skillfully. Uh, so they know, uh, again, not only visors, uh, uh, they know the high wire systems, and they also know Google Analytics. Uh, and these will be hourly arrangements uh, uh, for uh, consulting services, uh, which, which lets you, uh, you know, essentially uh, in decision support, one of the things we find is it's hard to know when you've got the answer. Uh, that, that you need. There's always a, a little more that uh, you need to do to refine data, so we, we, rather than try and come up with a fixed price or a fixed number of hours or a full statement of work, uh, we just think that hourly will be uh, more flexible for you. Um, you're always welcome to contact uh, me and Eric uh, to get something started, and uh, if, if at a certain point you feel you need uh, more hands-on help, we can refer you to, uh, to Colin uh, or to your account manager. Uh, now uh, we're uh, ready to go into the uh, last bit uh, of uh, the session. Uh, first of all, uh, questions uh, from you on any of the material uh, that has, has come up. Uh, and uh, right after the questions, I'd uh, like to uh, go on to talk for uh, at least 10 minutes, maybe even 15 minutes, uh, about uh, uh, your recommendations on priorities. Uh, open to questions. Uh, Eric, uh, uh, would you prefer people to, um, to speak up or do you want people to type into the chat box? Um, I can set it so that people can speak up, uh, if you'll just give me a moment. But first, we do have a question in the chat box I wanted to pass on to you, John. Okay. Uh, Question is, can you download the data as an XLS file? Yes, uh, you can. Um, uh, why don't I just do a quick demo? Uh, let's see, I'm still a presenter. Uh, let me uh, set up my screen a little better here. So uh, why don't I show you first, um, in the visor suite area of the community forum, uh, there is uh, a lot of documentation. It's in this yellow, and it's always at the top of the community forum. Uh, and there's one particular one uh, that I'd recommend here. It's called, uh, uh, it's, it's not just Impact Visor, it's any visor, downloading and exporting. Uh, and uh, if you go there, you'll see that there is a PowerPoint uh, that can help you do that. Uh, I'm going to just uh, quickly show you. 
uh, and why don't we um, go to the rejected article tracker and I'll just show you a, a quick download. Uh, let's say we want to download the list of articles in Chinese medicine uh, that were uh, rejected and published in Chinese medicine. Of course, the full list is down here below. What you're going to do is mouse over the citations heading. Don't mouse over the, uh, the, the sort control. Uh, mouse over the heading, click on it. You'll get a pop-up. It will tell you how many items are in the set. And then there is this uh, strange icon uh, that's meant to look like a spreadsheet. You click it and you get uh, a window. It's not a spreadsheet yet, it's a window. Uh, and then you click on download all rows. Do not click on full data. You'll regret that. Uh, click on download all rows. Uh, you get uh, a download and there's uh, your spreadsheet. So it's, it's, uh, it's really that straightforward. Uh, if, if you get stuck, uh, please just ask uh, for help. That's great, John. Thanks. We've got a, another question that's come through the chat, and then I will unmute everybody uh, if they want to ask questions uh, directly to John. Sure. Uh, the, the question is, can you set up alerts for citation thresholds? For example, all articles published in the last two years that have ah. reported 25 citations. I know uh, this is something we're working on, John. Yes. Um, can you give us an idea of some of the thresholds you have in mind that might be useful to people? Uh, We'd love to hear from you on those. Uh, uh, the, the, so there are two types of alerts. Let me see if I can, uh, well, uh, there are two types of alerts. Uh, and uh, one are, is, are the date-based alerts where every month or every quarter you get a visualization emailed to you. Uh, but the other type of alert is called a threshold alert. Uh, and here is when a certain threshold has been crossed that's when uh, we trigger the alert uh, and uh, then uh, it gets emailed out. The, the typical alerts we're looking at uh, are uh, alerts based on the measure by uh, uh, pop-up. So these would be uh, citation uh, totals um, or Mendeley save uh, totals. Uh, in Usage Visor, they'd be uh, uh, certain amounts of usage, and you'd be able to set that to be total usage, total full text usage, PDF usage, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, so those are the, the types of alerts we're looking at. If, if you can think of some other types, other things you'd like to trigger, uh, like to be the triggers, please just uh, uh, let us know that. Uh, we're, we're looking for the, the, the ideas uh, for you. Think about to help uh, think about it, um, think about what kinds of exceptions, uh, whether they're good exceptions or bad exceptions, you'd like uh, a managing editor to know about, uh, a, uh, an associate editor to know about, uh, a, uh, an ex a editor in chief to know about, or a reviewer to know about. Uh, or an author to know about, because one of the considerations is maybe some of these should be author-facing or reviewer-facing alerts. There, there's certainly uh, the suggestion uh, came up at the Stanford user group uh, that we expand uh, the, the concept of alerts out to others who are uh, part of the, the system, not just the, uh, the, the staff, if you will. Mm -hmm. Thanks, John. Um, so I am going to uh, unmute all of you uh, so you can ask questions uh, directly if you choose. Uh, for those of you in the car or in a particularly noisy area, if you would please mute your phones so we can hear each other, that would be great. Thanks so much. Any questions for us? All right, uh, I'm not hearing any questions. Uh, I'm hearing some great road noise, but <laughs> um, why well, don't uh, uh, 
I just encourage anybody who has specific questions to please go ahead and uh, let us know uh, what uh, is uh, uh, questions you have. You can, again, go back in the chat box for the next uh, 15 minutes or so. Uh, the, the, the next um, uh, topic, then, I'd like to pick up, uh, and this is a discussion topic. Uh, uh, I, and I know how hard that is uh, on a, a webinar with uh, 35 people on it. Uh, there's a set of priorities that, that uh, we've been uh, considering uh, and have talked to you about over the last year. Um, we'd like to hear from you what uh, the priorities are that you'd recommend. Uh, we've we've uh, talked uh, in this session, we've talked briefly about uh, Prospect Viewer. Uh, we've also talked briefly about uh, threshold alerts. Uh, I just mentioned author-facing alerts, uh, the idea that uh, the visors can be set up to send um, an alert to an author uh, quarterly about how many um, uh, citations an article has and how much usage it has, or perhaps uh, when uh, an article has crossed uh, 20 citations, uh, send an alert out to an author. Uh, we could also uh, hook up uh, alerts that go to reviewers. Uh, those are all uh, possibilities. Uh, the next one on the list uh, is uh, dynamic filters. Uh, this is uh, particularly appealing to large publishers. One of the things that we've seen happen, uh, especially in your list of talk sections, if you've got five or 10 or 30 journals uh, in, in there, you'll have two or 300 talk sections. Uh, and what you'd like to do is have that list uh, automatically reflect the journal or journals you select rather than all of your journals. So that's dynamic filters. Um, there's uh, new visuals to support specific tasks that you're doing over and over again. The WTF report, uh, the new journal uh, report, uh, those are the kinds of things that we've heard about. Other data that we could add. Uh, for example, being able to compare, uh, you, you see in the rejected article tracker, you see uh, that it, it tells you that this rejected article uh, from, uh, that was uh, rejected in 2015 and published in 2016 has 25 citations. Well, if you had published that article, uh, an article then, how many citations did your average article have uh, if it was published then? So essentially giving you a better comparison capability. Uh, next one is issue dates. Um, it's uh, one of the things we mentioned to, to people as we're uh, going through this is, uh, as we're uh, turning the system over to you, is the date of publication is the, uh, you're ahead of print date. It's not your issue date. Uh, but if you're trying to look at articles uh, that were published in issues, perhaps you want to align with the way Clarivate uh, uh, f uh, figures out uh, uh, dates, then that's the issue date. Uh, well, we can load issue dates in uh, if that's a priority. Uh, we could do other kinds of metadata normalization. Uh, what we've implemented is talk uh, uh, section and collection normalization. Uh, perhaps you have uh, some others uh, you're interested in. Uh, so those are the, the kinds of things uh, we've uh, been hearing about. Uh, we're interested in getting uh, feedback uh, from you on uh, these priorities, where you would put this, uh, things in this list, uh, but also uh, any other suggestions you have, uh, things that uh, would help, help you uh, get more and more value out of uh, visors. So over uh, to you all for discussion. Do we have any questions from attendees? John, I've uh, unmuted just about everybody, but it doesn't look like we have any questions at the moment. Uh, right. I'll just use this opportunity to remind people that there is uh, lots of documentation available on the Visor Suite uh, Highwire Community Forum. Uh, please uh, join that forum. If you have any questions about joining that forum uh, or connecting with the Visor Suite forum, please uh, send me an email uh, or 
you can uh, email support-advisors at highwire.org at any time, and we will respond. Uh, let's see. I see a couple of questions. Uh, uh, let's see. Sample arts. All right. I've, I've, we've gotten some feedback in the questions uh, area. Um, uh, one of you is, has fessed up to being the source of clinical trails instead of clinical trials. I won't name names. Um, <laughs> Uh, and a vote for loading issue dates uh, has come up. Um, uh, another suggestion that uh, I've seen, let me go back to that list. Uh, another suggestion uh, we've seen is to uh, uh, enable uh, automatically uh, factoring the uh, uh, Clarivate authority file in so that when we're doing uh, impact calculations, we know which uh, article types are in the denominator and which are not. Uh, and that's certainly a project we can, we can take on uh, if it's uh, voted uh, high enough uh, by you all. All right. So I think that's it for questions. Uh, again, uh, please don't hesitate to um, shoot an email to John or I uh, or the support email address. And please join the community forum to keep up with uh, the latest discussion around visors. Thank you, everyone, for your time. And we'll look forward to uh, hearing uh, feedback from you all. Thanks very much. Bye. Bye-bye.